Howdy, Precal. It's Ms. Kosh. I wanted to take a moment to introduce parametric equations to you. Um, a parametric equation is a type of equation that introduces a new parameter. And typically, that parameter is the variable t that represents time. It doesn't have to be t. It doesn't have to be time. But typically, what we'll do is we will have x defined in terms of t and y de defined in terms of t. So you'll notice right here, we've got x equals 2t minus 1 and y equals t plus 3. Um, oh, did I remember to change? Here's a new one. Oh. Yeah, maybe I did change it. 2t minus 1. Oh, haha. -ha. OK. For your version, I'll change the practice problem. I copied and pasted and forgot. OK, my bad. All right, so here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by making a table and saying, OK, what happens when we plug in different t values? Um, and since we're talking time, we don't usually talk about negative time. So you'll notice that my t values begin at 0, and I'm just saying, OK, t equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, when we see some application problems, we'll talk about whether that's in terms of seconds or minutes or hours or, or, or what the context is. Um, so in this case, it doesn't matter a whole lot. So let's just jump right in. When I plug in 0 for x, this goes to 0, and I'm just left with negative 1. So my x value is negative 1. When I plug in 0 for my y value, I get 3. Um, well, let's, let's just do all the x's. OK, so when I plug in, notice this right here is a linear function. My slope is um, 2, my y-intercept is negative 1. And sure enough, when I plug in 0, I get negative 1, and my slope is 2. So I would expect to go 1, 3, 5, 7. Let's check by plugging in 4 right here. If I plug in 4, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7, and we're good to go. Um, on the other one, I have a slope of 1 and an initial point of 3. So then this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's make sure I plug in 4 right here, 4 plus 3, sure enough, is 7. Um, so looking at this, I'm going to kind of draw my grid in such a way. Um, I, they, I gave you the grid, but I didn't put an x and y um, axis in case you needed to adjust where it is. So let's just say we need to go as far as negative 1 and as, let's see, uh, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. OK, if I make this my axis and make this my axis, then that would be just fine. It doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, but basically, I've got the point when x equals negative 1, y equals 1, 2, 3. Oh, did I save enough space? And then I have the point 1, 4. I have the point 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I have um, 5, 6, and 7, 7. Oh, that worked out nicely. OK, and now often these, we'll draw these and put an arrow to kind of show which way it's going and kind of where our starting point is. Um, so this was at when, when t was equal to 0, when time was 0, we were at that point, and then time was equal to 1. You don't necessarily have to label all of those, but that does show you what's happening here. Now, this is a piece of a line, okay? Um, so we want to write that equation. Currently, the equation was in parametric form. We want to put it back into rectangular, or we might call it Cartesian, after Rene Descartes. Um, put it back in the form that we're familiar with. So one of the easier ways to do that would be to, to solve one of these for t. So notice how easy it would be to solve this one for t. I would have t is equal to y minus 3. And now I can plug this in where I saw t in the previous equation. Um, so I end up with x is equal to 2 times y minus 3 minus 1, cleaning this up x is equal to 2y minus 6 minus 1, so that's minus 7. Um, and I end up with, OK, um, I can say x minus 2y equals negative 7. That's standard form, the ax plus by equals c. Or I could have said, OK, well, 2y is equal to add 7 to the other side, x plus 7. Divide everybody by 2, so I can get this into to, um, y-intercept form. Uh, 1 half x plus 7 halves. Let's see, is my slope 1 half? If I start uh, here, I'm going to rise 1 over run 2. So yes, that's a slope of 1 half. I'm back in algebra 1. My y-intercept, um, that's 3.5. 1, 2, 3.5. Yeah, lo looks good. OK, so depending on which form they 
Um, I would accept both of these are in rectangular or Cartesian form. I, Unless I tell you specifically which one, either one of those would be fine. Okay, the next one gets a little bit more interesting. I created the problem and then didn't check to see how well it worked, but here we go. Um, so on this one, I'm going to plug in the same idea, plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for both x and y. Um, when I plug in 0, I get negative 1. When I, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the first equation. I'm going to do all of my x and then do all of my y. Um, and then plug in 1. 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0. 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8. 4 squared, oh, well, that's kind of annoying. Uh, 16 minus 1, I mean, it's, I was thinking in terms of it's not going to fit on my grid, but okay, whatever, we're fine. Um, now let's look at the y values. Plug in 0 for my y value here. 0 times 3 is still 0, plus 2 is 2. I have a slope of 3, so I can just add 3 each time. Um, let's verify when I plug 4 in here. I have 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Okay, that's good. So now what I'm looking at is um, I have I have these points. Let's see, where do I want to make? Uh, la, 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 la. Let's make, well, we need all, only positive y values. Um, maybe I should change my grid to be in terms of 2. So each, each little line, let's see if that helps us. So if I'm at negative 1, 2, I'm going to say this is that point. So this right here was negative 1. And then each one of these, this is 2, and that would be 4. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm at 0, 5, so that's going to be somewhere here. My line got a little off, whatever. Um, 3 would be 2. This is 3 right here. 3 would be 8, 2, 4, 6, 8 right here. Um, and then I have 8, so 2, 4, 6. Here's 8. And I'm at 11, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 11 puts me here. I'm at 15, so 8, this is 10, this is 12, this is 14, this is 15 right here. 14, um, okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 should be somewhere about here. Notice this is doing something kind of like that. This looks to me a lot like... A parabola that's on its side or maybe well we don't exactly know what it is yet um, but this this is uh, well that's what it's gonna be <laughs> sorry okay so let's go ahead and solve um, our equation let's let's put it into rectangular form for us um, when I look back at these two um, I noticed that it would be easier to solve this one as opposed to the other one um, let's see is there any reason that I shouldn't do that no, what would have happened here if I had plugged in, let's say I wanted to know what happens when t was equal to negative 1. When I plug in negative 1, I'm going to get 0 for my x value, and I'm going to get um, negative 1. That gives me negative 3 plus 1 is going to give me a negative 1 for my y value. So I'm going to have at 0x... I'm at negative 1, which is down here for y. Notice this, what this starts to do is it's going to be, I've got this parabola, like I've got half of this parabola, but if I were allowed to go into the negative times, I'm going to get the other half of the parabola. So this one's no longer a function, um, but, okay, I digress. Anyway, that's what's, that's what's happening with this one. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. There it goes. Okay, so coming back up here, I'm so sorry. This one is going to give me, I know that, well, 3t is equal to y minus 2. Therefore, t is equal to y minus 2 over 3. I can now plug that into the other one. And so I have that x is equal to y minus 2 over 3 squared minus 1. Um, cleaning this up a little bit, I get x is equal to, well, how about this? 1 ninth times y minus 2 squared, and then there's a minus 1 right here. I'm leaving it this way because towards the end of the year, we're going to study conic sections, and we're going to see that this is a parabola that um, that has been rotated 90 degrees. So it's not a parabola that opens up and down, up or down. It's a parabola that would either open to the left or the right. And we're going to study this later, and it's going to look a lot like this right here. Um, but for our purposes now, we're done. The question is, is this a function? The answer is no, it's not a function, um, but that's how we work with parametric equations. 
there's, um, I'm going to change this one in just a second. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll come up with something. And this will be another one um, that you get to practice on your own. And I did change this one. Now notice this number four has a square just like number two did, but there's a different, um, the square shows up in a different place. So in this one it had been the x was, or the x was equal to something squared, and so that's why our parabola was sideways. On this one, we now have the y has the square, and so I would expect something to open either up or down. So I'm gonna keep going with my answer key, but I want you to go try, um, I'm gonna go make up, I'll change that for your, your paper, but um, yeah, go try these, see what you can do. Next class, we will look at um, application problems, and so this is where that gets, that gets a lot more interesting there, but I wanted to introduce the idea and give you two problems to practice, and then we can move on from there. All right, good luck.